Welcome, everybody. This is Eric Frazier from the FileMaker Marketing Team, and I'm your host for today's Quickly Develop and Deploy Custom iPhone and iPad Solutions Web Seminar, giving you a look at how to create custom business solutions for iOS devices using the top-selling business data app for iPhone and iPad. Today, we have Ryan Rosenberg, Vice President of Marketing at FileMaker, and Bill Heiser, Sales Engineer from FileMaker, who will be doing the live demonstration. But before we get started, I have some brief housekeeping notes. For the best experience, we strongly recommend that you participate in this web seminar with at least a broadband connection. If you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact WebEx Technical Support at 866-229-3239. During today's presentation, you'll have the opportunity to type in questions. Let's talk briefly about how to enter a question. Just click on the question mark icon in your Event Center control panel. Next, enter your question and hit the Send button. Select the blue arrow icon and finally choose Return to Desktop Sharing. We'll cover as many questions as time allows at the end of our presentation. And one other brief note, in order to keep delivering FileMaker Web Seminars that are of interest to you, please take time to fill out a brief survey that will appear after the end of this presentation. Thank you. And at this point, I'd like to hand the presentation over to Ryan Rosenberg. Ryan? Thanks. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm excited to have a chance to talk to you today. Would you like to create solutions like this? You probably think it's hard, right? Take you a lot of time, probably take days, weeks, months. We're going to show you today how you can create a solution like this in a few hours. And not only is it going to be easy to create, the solution is going to do a ton for you, and it's going to look great, too. The secret for this is FileMaker Pro. FileMaker Pro is a platform for creating data-driven solutions. You can use it for iOS as well as for Windows and the Mac. We have a complete line here that scales from individual deployments all the way up to large workgroups driven by servers. FileMaker is a subsidiary of Apple, and we're the number one database on the Mac, but we're also the number two database on Windows. We actually sell more copies of FileMaker Pro on Windows than the Mac. So whatever you connect your iPhone or your iPad to, you can also run FileMaker on the other side. FileMaker Go is the part of this product line that runs the databases on the iPhone and the iPad. It's the best-selling business database on both the iPhone and the iPad. FileMaker is a wholly owned subsidiary of Apple, so you know we're going to be around for quite a while. And uh, we're very popular throughout the world, used in large organizations, small businesses, government, nonprofits, schools. You know, thousands and thousands of organizations, work groups, and individuals use FileMaker right now as we're sitting here today. Um, and the point here is that as iPhones and iPads get into all these organizations, as iPhones and iPads get into your organization, FileMaker's already there. Now, what we're talking about here today is iOS. We're all familiar with writing solutions for desktops. But when you think about iOS solutions, there's a few things you need to think differently about. Um, of course, the obvious points are, gosh, the screen sizes are different, and you have touch interface. But there's other things to consider as well. First of all, we know that many people who are deploying iOS solutions today, iPhones and iPads, are trying to move very quickly. They're trying to do proof of concepts. They're trying to prototype. Second thing is, if you build a solution on an iPad, you may also want a desktop component. Let's say you're going to be gathering some survey information. Well, you may want to use a desktop to analyze that information. What you don't want to do is write your, your solution twice. So it would be great if you could create something that would run in both places. The third thing is you have corporate information already. You have organizational information. It might be in a SQL database, for example. And you might want to deliver this information out to the iPhone or iPad. So your iPhone or iPad solution doesn't operate in a vacuum. It needs to integrate with other solutions. It might integrate with multiple data sources. Now, security is, of course, a concern here. If you lose your iPhone or your iPad, you want to make sure that your solution can be locked down. You want to make sure that you don't lose your data. Um, <clears throat> finally, you need to consider online and offline access. It's one thing to have, let's say, a, a, a desktop connected to a, a wired network. It's another thing to have uh, an iPhone that's going in and out of connections and moving around. So these are all considerations that you need to think about when building a custom iOS solution. Now we're going to demo in a little bit how you could use FileMaker Pro and FileMaker Go, but I want to make a couple points really clear. First of all, you develop on FileMaker Pro, and you develop your solution on a, on a Mac or a Windows machine. 
but then you can deploy and run it in a variety of different places. You can run it on a Mac Wins machine, but you can also deploy it directly to an iPhone or an iPad. You, for example, you can just copy the database there. Let's say you build a product catalog and you want to have your salespeople on the showroom floors showing people the product catalog on an iPad. Well, you would create it on a desktop and then just simply copy it over to the, uh, to the iPhone or iPad. We'll describe a little more about how this works later. There's another option with FileMaker Pro that's quite exciting, which is the idea to use a server. So you can take your solution and host it on a server. That means your solution and your data never leaves that server. What you're now doing is you're using your iPhone or iPad to access the information remotely. You can do that over a network, wireless network. You can do it over VPN. You can do it over the Internet. And in this particular case, if you lose your iPhone or your iPad, your data is completely secure because it was never on the iPhone or the iPad to begin with. You're just accessing it remotely. So two very important and useful options to, to create and deploy your solutions. FileMaker Go is being used at many different organizations today. These are just a few examples. Uh, it's being used to, uh, to store inventory uh, and, and, and access inventory, do inventory management. We see this all the time. Field audits, uh, route management is, a, is another good example. Uh, this is a case where a company is sending reps out into uh, cafes and um, into uh, coffee shops to put up posters. And they're using iPod uh, touches with FileMaker Go on there. It helps the rep know what route to go on, and it helps them take, uh, they can take pictures of the posters on the wall and send them back for reports. You've got uh, sales and customer service scenarios. Here's a, a car rental company managing not only the sales side of things, but also inventory and customer delivery. You've got a large corporate, um, a large uh, pharmaceutical company, Merck there, who's doing a, di a dictionary. So there's just many different uses, whether it's research or property management or, or managing events, that you'll see FileMaker go used to. By the way, all these examples I gave today, you can see these up on the FileMaker website. These are case studies that we have written there. In some cases, we even have a video. So uh, go, to the, go to FileMaker, and you can look up these uh, stories. But uh, they say that um, uh, uh, words are good, but seeing is, is, is believing. And so I think I'm going to turn it over now to Bill Heiser, who's a system engineer here at FileMaker. And he's going to go ahead and demonstrate uh, this solution, uh, how, you t how you can create custom iOS solutions very, very quickly and easily. Thank you, Ryan. Welcome you all this morning. Hope you're doing well. Gonna a little bit of an agenda here. I'd like to um, sort of start off today with um, a finished solution, something that uh, is something that Ryan mentioned, sort of a catalog use, and um, we'll work through that. And then we're going to work through some spreadsheets and uh, convert those to databases. We're going to aggregate up a number of different data sources, including the spreadsheet that we start off with, as well as some other FileMaker data and even some uh, Microsoft SQL Server data. We'll look at uh, building a simple front end, and then we'll uh, probably use our server product to integrate that into Active Directory, uh, push that thing to the iOS device, and then take a look at some various controls and building some things. So uh, my hope is to show you something here to start off with to entice you to hang around a little bit, and um, hope we have a good time. So first off, let's just take a look at the FileMaker Go application. Uh, right here I'm looking at uh, an, an iPad, and I'm going to go ahead and blow this up a little bit just so we can uh, see it a little bit better. Size isn't going to work the best for us here, but um, we're going to go ahead and launch this application, and I'll give you a quick tour of how the uh, application operates. Basically, like Ryan mentioned, you can have files on your device. Those files can get on the device through a number of methods. Uh, you can sync them through iTunes. You can email them to someone. They can open it on their device. You can use file services such as Box.net or something to pull those down to the device. And they reside on here, and they require no connectivity. Now, you can build models that are um, um, allow you to work offline and then push that data back up to, uh, say, a hosted solution to create a synchronization model. But you can also just connect directly to a um, remote database. So for example, if I click on something here and ask for it to give me back a response from the, the uh, number of files that are on a particular server, I can see that I can connect to these files directly. <clears throat> We're going to use uh, this to in our demonstration here to show you how to connect to these files. I'm running a virtual machine here that we'll interact with and show you how to connect in real time to a real time connected file and uh, develop with. So I'm going to go ahead and switch uh, away from um, here and let's go ahead and take a look at a solution. This is a solution for a uh, popular motorcycle vendor and, and this solution is kind of like a, a product catalog. The idea here is to allow for someone uh, to be able to work on the sales floor, perhaps have easy access information to a variety of catalog information without having to look through well, a lot of product literature. 
the solution is pretty straightforward and allows us to do some things like uh, just simple finds for product information. I can look at different colors of the, this vehicle that's uh, available. I can look up technical specifications. You see the data-driven part of this where I've got information about uh, engines and performance and various other um, um, technical information. I can also uh, embed some information that comes from other sources, like, for example, a PDF. This is using a technology built into FileMaker Pro and Go that allows us to use something called a web viewer. And the web viewer is, in this case, accessing this PDF that was stored in the database and allows me to interact with that just as I would uh, on a desktop. I can also open up uh, marketing information. If I open this thing up, I can use whatever PDF viewer that I have available on my iOS device. And I can browse through that just like I would if I, the file were stored on there, but it's part of my database structure. There is uh, another component where it allows me to um, do some things if I was specifically on an iPhone. Now, if I wanted to um, take a look at an inventory location for these particular um, available motorcycles, I can see that I've got three and two and two of these available at these different locations. On an iPhone, they support the ability to just click in a field and we can dial the phone for you. And in addition to that, we can integrate in with uh, some of the internal apps on the iPhone and the iPad. In this case, I pull up the Maps application, and, and I'm in a web kit here, and it's allowing me to interact with my mapping. If I open this in Safari, if I run an actual device, it would pass that information directly to the Maps application and allow me to um, interact with that just as I normally would. So this is a brief overview of some, just a particular solution here. I'm going to switch this over to the, um, to the um, iPhone, because we're going to come back to that and use it here in just a little bit. Well, let's go ahead and start off with building something and see how we get here. One of the first things that I'm sure we've all dealt with is, um, is having a lot of our information stored in Excel spreadsheets. And um, in this particular case, I've got an Excel spreadsheet that's roughly got about 20,000 records in it. I want to be able to take this and, and do some quick conversion on it and solve some key issues right out of the gate that's going to help me take this directly to the iPhone. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this spreadsheet, and I'm going to drag it, and I'm going to drop it right in here into FileMaker. FileMaker is going to analyze this file. It's going to determine that it's an Excel spreadsheet. It's also going to give me the ability to uh, choose the column names as field names. I'm just going to save this off as, as a file, and it's going to actually import all of those records. It's going to build the, uh, the field format, and I'm going to have a couple of key issues solved right away for me that's going to prepare me for going to the iOS device. The first one is the ability to just... Um, simply do some things like sort columns and, and this sort of, of thing. If I were to do that in an Excel spreadsheet, I can't tell you how many times that I've, I've done some sort of a, a sort and I forgot to select all of, my, uh, all of the other rows, and data gets a little bit uh, wonky there. But in this particular case, uh, we've also got the ability to do some quick finds. FileMaker supports what's called query by example. And um, you know, it's one thing to sort records if I have a couple hundred and scroll down to the list to find the one I'm looking for. It's another to just be up and go up and ask a very specific question, like I'm looking for the people in the state of Indiana, and I'm looking uh, for the people in North Dakota. I perform that fine, and I get a found set of 409 records out of 18,000. Let's take it to the next level here, and let's go ahead and push this file up to uh, a server. And the reason I'm going to do this is, is sort of multiple fold, but let's, let's go ahead and drop it on there real quick. I'll grab that file, and I'm going to push it up to my server. And this is really all that's required to deploy this, certain, this uh, application. It's going to mount it, and it's going to make it available to us. So at this point, we have converted the file. We've pulled it up. We've put it on a server. And I'm going to go ahead and open that file right on the iOS device. We'll go up here, browse to this particular environment. When it, it'll query the server, find out which files are available to me based on the number of things. Security models uh, are all supported. If I open this file up now, you will see that it basically is the same file that we had there, and I've, all that is required to deploy to the device. The same sort of functionality is, is, is applied as well. If I enter find mode here, and I go in and do a find on state, I'll do Indiana, and um, let's go ahead and do that multiple request. Add a find request, and North Dakota, and I produce the same set of records here. I have access to scroll through all those records, and I can manipulate it. So easy enough. Simple uh, deployment model, that's about all that's required to do that. At this point, though, I've solved the other two key things for me, uh, number one being the idea that I can now have multiple users access this application. Hundreds of users at a time can access this, and uh, you saw every step it took to, to get it to that point. But what's next? Well, what's next is uh, 
having the ability to mock this thing up and build a few more components. The first thing I want to show you is building something from absolute bare bones. So I'm going to actually open a file. We're going to look through all these project files. And this first one here has absolutely nothing in it. There's basically one table. It has no fields, and there's no relationships. Now, putting it on the server is also giving me the ability to integrate in a, a couple of uh, really important components. The first one is the ability to integrate with multiple different data sources. So we can go in and we can add another FileMaker data source. Uh, we had that uh, customer file. I'm just going to connect to a customer file here and add it to my um, solution. And I'm also going to add some additional data source. How about some SQL Server data? A FileMaker server can aggregate up this information, and I can add any, any uh, ODBC data source that server can talk to, that being Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, as well as um, MySQL. Now, when I do this, I'm actually providing myself a key benefit here. And I take a moment to pause because I'd like to point this out. The server has an ODBC driver installed on it. I have a system DSN set up to talk to this AdventureWorks database. That allows me to share that data source with any client that I have whether it be a Windows client, a Macintosh client, or an iOS device, which doesn't even have a driver capable for it. What this does is allow server to be an aggregator of this, and I can use this information across any of those devices without deploying or configuring any DSN. So here we see this, this ODBC data source is coming from AdventureWorks. This source is coming from a FileMaker file. All right. Now, rather than watching me draw lines, let's just go ahead and Betty Crocker this thing forward a little bit, and um, we'll take a look at what it might look like once I get all that uh, built. So let's take a look at this data model now. Here the red ones represent data from SQL Server. The green one represents that file that we uh, migrated over uh, from Excel, and the inventory file is another FileMaker data source. All right, over to here then, I want to point out something with security. By putting this file on server, we now have the ability to use external authentication. This virtual machine that we're using is actually an Active Directory setup with Windows 2008. And uh, I'm going to leverage this to deploy my solution and back end all of my security in there. And I literally just create groups in Active Directory and match those groups up in my FileMaker solution. So if we take a look at this particular solution on the desktop, I want to pull up the iOS device. and We're going to actually log into that file here. You'll notice that I'll get challenged. I will have to use my credentials to log into this file. This is my Active Directory account. And when I pull that file up, you'll see that it's going to look exactly the same way that it does over here on the desktop. So let's do some modifications, play around with a couple of controls, and see how easy it is to update my application should I need to do so. So we'll go into layout mode, which is essentially design mode of FileMaker. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this field. I'd prefer to maybe have the customer name in here. You'll see I have my relationships all set up, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to choose to ch put in the customer's full name. And uh, let's go ahead and add a simple tab control that we've got available to us. And we'll create a couple of tabs. We'll call it Invoice, Inventory, and perhaps Overview. And we'll justify that to full. And let's go ahead and put some data on there. So we're going to drag our portal tool out here, which allows me to look at related data. Think of it as a list view control. And I'm going to ask for data from the sales order. Let's put a scroll bar on there. And um, let's go ahead and drop some fields in there. Again, my inventory data coming from a FileMaker database, I'll add that. I laid some uh, data that's stored in SQL Server. I'm going to get the order quantity, the unit price, and the line total. And let's go ahead and lay this out a little bit. I'm going to take these three items. And I'm going to pull them down to here. I'm going to take the item, and I'm going to pull it over to here. Let's go ahead and format these two guys to be uh, currency with a couple of decimal places and a 1,000 separator. So what do I have now? Well, I have a solution that is showing me information from really three different data sources. And if I move through my record set, you'll see that those SQL queries are performing automatically for me. I've literally written nothing. So how does that transform to the iOS device? Well, you'll see that it's already done. Um, as soon as I'm, since I'm connected to this on the server, if I connect to the file in real time on my iOS device, I'm going to have the ability to just see those changes happen in real time. 
let's do another quick example of that. And I'm going to uh, put this in layout mode again. I'm going to take and um, add a extension to my schema. And what I mean by that is because FileMaker is connected to that SQL store, I'm going to use the data in that to extend uh, my solution. I need a piece of information that doesn't necessarily exist in the SQL store. I could go to the DBA and ask for it. However, this might be a quicker way to uh, to go about it, and it only exists within the confines of uh, this FileMaker solution. So we'll call this sum of line total. Simple calculation. We'll use FileMaker's uh, calculation engine, which is a pretty robust way to uh, derive business logic. And we're going to go through that, and we're going to total up all the line totals. So what we have here now is a uh, aggregation to summarize up this line total information. I'm just going to grab it, and we'll pull it right down to here. Maybe we've got enough room there. Scoot this whole thing up to give ourselves a little bit more room. There we go. And let's go ahead and spread that out a little bit. So if we save that, and we look over here, we'll see that this line total is showing up over here. And if I navigate through the records, you'll see that that total actually moves pretty quickly, and it's aggregating all of those components up. Well, what if I want to view this a little bit differently? You know, having a data view is one thing. Having a, another view uh, might be a little bit better for us. So let's uh, use a charting tool. We've got the ability to use charting built into FileMaker. And uh, I'm just going to do a simple horizontal bar chart here. Uh, we'll call it uh, Invoice Inventory Items. And our vertical axis will be from the inventory file. We'll choose Item. And let's put a couple of item, couple of things on here. Let's do from order detail. Let's do order quantity. I'm going to use the data from related records, and I'm going to get those related records from uh, the detail file. And if I view this, and I go over here on my iOS device. If you see, I will click on inventory, and you'll see that as I'm not representing the data perfectly, but you get the idea that the chart. Um, draws and updates automatically. All right, so we've done a couple of things here. Let's move forward and let's take it to another level. And to do that, we're going to actually open up a third file, and we're going to open up this project C file. Now what I've done here is add a couple of little things. You'll see that um, uh, it lays out almost exactly the way that it did before, but it looks a little bit cleaner. And let's open it over here on our iPhone. Again, I will get challenged with the Active Directory integration. And then I'm going to end up laying on that layout. And you'll see that here that I've got the same controls. I've actually added an additional chart that shows you my inventory levels uh, based on this particular product or products within the solution. We may want to look at the data a little bit differently. Here's where I start customizing my interface to look a lot more like uh, the iOS. In this case, I've got a list of all the different pieces of inventory that I have. You're looking at data that's coming from the inventory file, and it also is coming from um, another FileMaker uh, file. So let's just do something simple, like let's do a quick find here or, um, for, let's say, um, a regulator. I have 32 records that match that criteria, and if I look through those, I can see all these different components. Now I'm going to go ahead and select one of those, and it'll take me to a detail screen. So if we look at this detail screen, we start really um, getting down to how we can take the FileMaker uh, layout controls and lay them out to give us something really useful to work with. I can do things like uh, create simple buttons to pop up menus to allow for a little bit better reading. I can use uh, pinch and zoom on, on the application to, to blow it up if I need to view it. I also, again, have information about uh, PDFs and all that information stored in the FileMaker database, and I can pull it up. I can email that component if a customer or one of my representatives from an inventory that I'm purchasing might want. I can move through these records and I have full navigation capability. I'm looking at 502 records here. I'm sitting on record number eight. Now, I want to bring up um, another little feature here that allows us to do a few things um, in terms of customizing the user interface. If I were to look at this particular record, you'll notice that this conditional uh, formatting shows up. This is nothing more than just a simple uh, conditional format applied in FileMaker. allows you to license business rules into the front end. And I've applied that so that it works in um, my FileMaker layout and therefore works in the iOS device. In this case, it's telling me, hey, your, your uh, inventory level is a little bit low. Um, 
you're going to need to go ahead and get some new orders. And let's assume then I get those orders in. Well, what might I want to do with them? Well, we can use a new feature that just came out with the recent release of FileMaker Go. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the inventory file that this is linked to. So what we're doing here is we're looking at the actual record uh, that I'm going to be updating over here. So if we were to take and actually click on this button, it allows us to takes us to a detail screen. I'm going to modify the um, I'm going to modify the uh, amount of inventory. Let's say to 800, I get a couple of those in. I can select to go ahead and get the signature. I'm going to go ahead and just slap a little something on here, and I will accept it. Now, what I want you to notice is that this field over here is actually representative of this particular record. And as I update the inventory and sign for it, I will click on this, and you will notice that my signature pops into that database over to there. It gives this nice signature capture capability. You can imagine all the uh, possible uses you have for, uh, have for that. I want to show you uh, another piece where we're actually integrating in a lot of the SQL Server data. Um, here we have the price history. One of the business rules that might be applied is when I'm out taking my inventory and I find that there's a price adjustment, I'm going to need to make that modification. We need to keep a log of when that happens. If we look over here to SQL Server, I'm actually going to go ahead and perform a query um, on the SQL store. Let's see, select star from production dot product. List. There we go. Price history. Where uh, product ID equals. We're looking at I think record 707. Let's go ahead and execute that. And we'll see that we get three records returned here. Now, if I go over here and I pull up my iOS device, these records represent the price change over time. So, in order to perform the right logic here, I'm going to need to do three things: a, update the price, add the record. I'm going to give it a start date, but I'm also going to have to go back and modify this record back here to tell it that that's when this price ended. So using a very simple script in FileMaker, and I'm actually just going to show you that to show you there's not a whole lot of complexity to this, and there's absolutely no SQL involved. If I add price change, I'm just setting some fields, and because these uh, move through the portal and I navigate through and, and make the changes to the appropriate records, but you'll see no SQL um, information there. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say that uh, due to some recent price changes, I need to make this uh, $50. And we'll execute that, and you'll see that the price will get modified here. The previous date gets modified. If we go look at our SQL uh, data and we re-execute that query, you'll see that that price is reflected in there. So I've updated SQL both on both sides. If I come back and we see it in FileMaker and I'm able to come over here, and if I refresh this window, you'll see that that price has changed over there. One more thing I want to show you in terms of how you might um, um, leverage a, one of the newer components is the ability to just do reporting right on the device. Here I've got an entire catalog, and let's say I want to run a simple report on that. I'm going to go ahead and just generate, um, uh, we'll just do all these pages. And if I generate this to PDF, I can view it, I can save it. I'm just going to view it, and you'll see that it'll generate all those pages. I'm actually generating that PDF right there on that device. I can come up here, and I have access to printing uh, that to whatever printers I have available, and I can move through and do those things. The last component I want to show you is vectoring to the appropriate resource. And um, many times I'm asked, well, how do you get it to determine what you're on? And it's a very simple script. There's a lot of ways you can do this. The way that I approach it is just look at the application version, look for a set of strings, and I'm going to vector to the right um, device. So in this case, if I open it up on the iPhone, it'll bring me up to uh, the one that you just saw. However, if I switch my device and I come over to the iPad, I'm going to go ahead and rotate this left. We're going to go ahead and launch FileMaker Go on the iPad, and we're going to make a connection to that exact same uh, file that we had on there. And then it will, when the script opens up, it will actually vector to the appropriate resource based on the device that I'm at. So we open up Project C. I'll get challenged for my credentials. I'll provide that. And we are going to get vectored to the more appropriate layout for this particular device. You see it's laid out completely different. So my hope is that you, you know, we've walked through a couple of different controls. We've converted some spreadsheets. Uh, we've added a few 
extra little features to the machine or to the iOS device layouts. You simply build in one specific place in the development tool FileMaker Pro, and it deploys to any of those devices. In addition, I just wanted to bring up if I were on a Macintosh or Windows, they would look exactly the same, and I could vector to those platforms as well. So hopefully this has been uh, informative for you. And um, I'm going to go ahead and switch back here to the, uh, to the slides. So give me just a second. Put this up for you. I'm getting there, Eric. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks, Bill. That was a uh, very informative presentation. I'd like to remind everybody that we are going to be uh, addressing your questions at this point. So feel free to type in your questions, and uh, Ryan and Bill will try to address them. Okay. Well, we've got a number of questions that have come in here, Eric, and I'll try to answer some, and I'll, and I'll ask Bill to answer a few. Uh, uh, here's some specific um, questions. <clears throat> One question asked, um, how do you keep someone from uh, copying the signature capture? And uh, well, ultimately, of course, if you're scanning a document uh, with a signature on it, or you're capturing online, and it's on, it's in displayed in front of you, and there are bits on the screen, someone could do a screen capture. But you certainly can lock down that field. Do you have any other comments about how, how to prevent uh, copying of a signature capture, Bill? Well, I mean, I guess if you're taking a picture, FileMaker doesn't really store anything other than just the picture itself. So by the time that it reaches the, the storage, it's stored in a container field, and it's nothing more than, a, I believe, it's a PNG at that point. You can certainly take a snapshot of it. But in addition to um, uh, storing a physical signature, uh, one of the things that we talked about, even with Active Directory or just FileMaker rights, you probably also might want to have a checkbox that allows the person maybe to authenticate with some user credentials to both verify from an electronic perspective as well as a physical signature perspective. So, yeah, so that's a good question. I think the bottom line is you have to make a decision whether or not you want to go to online signatures uh, that are displayable. Uh, that would be true no matter what technology you're using. Um, another question here is how much does this all cost? That's a pretty reasonable question. So FileMaker Pro starts at $300 per sheet for the clients. So uh, at, you know, the minimum you'll need is at least one copy of that. And then FileMaker Go, the thing that allows you to run FileMaker on the iPhone or the iPad, costs uh, $20 per iPhone and uh, $40 per iPad. So really quite cost effective. Now if you, you can expand from there and, and get lots of volumes of licenses for FileMaker Pro and, you can, and servers. Servers start at uh, um, $1,000 for our basic server, and then there's an advanced server that's about $3,000. So that should give you some feeling for the price points of FileMaker, of the FileMaker product line. Uh, another question that came in here was, okay, if we don't want to do it ourselves and want some consulting, uh, where would we go? Th that's a good question because people often think they want to create a custom solution, and they say, well, why don't we go hire the guys that wrote Angry Birds? But the, the Angry Birds guys are, are busy, and so it sometimes can be tricky to find someone. The good news for FileMaker is that it's actually very easy to find someone. There's over 1,000 consulting firms located around the world that are in the FileMaker um, consulting program. Business Alliance, we call it. You can find information about this on the FileMaker website. You can look up consultants in your area. These are people with FileMaker expertise, and they can come in and very quickly uh, create custom solutions. Uh, here is a question I'm going to pass on to Bill. The question is, is the data exchange to FileMaker server encrypted? Yeah, all data on, from client, any client, whether that be from an iOS device or from Windows or Mac, you have the ability on the server side to essentially turn on uh, SSL, and that does a uh, RSA encryption, anything over the wire. Passwords are always encrypted regardless of the setting, but anytime that you're moving data between client and server, if you t and decide to choose to do that, you can do that server side, and all of that data is encrypted going over the wire. Uh, another question that popped up is, can you have auto log on on certain files, or is there a key option to bypass log on? Uh, we don't have that at this time. There, 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 you know, there's a temptation to say, well, we'll just uh, uh, store our authentication locally in the mobile device, and then we don't have to log on each time. But of course, that could be a security, uh, a security um, issue. So what we've done is we've, at this point, we're requiring authentication. Uh, we may eventually give you some more flexibility in that area. Do you have something you want to add to that, Bill? Yeah, and, and, and I, I totally follow where you're, you're 
the vein of, of where the question is coming from. But in addition, just to be just to be clear, uh, you can also set up a file to, just to automatically log in. And you, you may have a service account that you want to use to do that. Perhaps it's even um, there's multiple levels of authentication where you could log a person in under guest access, and then if you wanted to give them it, and that would happen automatically. And then you could give them the ability to log in while they're even in the solution using it in sort of a read-only mode to authenticate and then begin to do some things with that. So you can get in a file without having to provide credentials. Uh, you'll just have to pr decide what your risk mitigation strategy is for doing so. Oh, excellent point. Yeah, one of the benefits of FileMaker, one of the features of FileMaker, and Bill just touched on it very briefly in his demo, is the really amazing amount of flexibility you have in the security model. Uh, you know, you can have security at many different types of levels, many different types of access, access at the field level. And so there's really quite a bit of uh, quite a few options, as well as the ability, as Bill pointed out, to integrate your um, secure, integrate with your existing security uh, structure. Um, here's some other questions we have here. Oh, here's one. Is there any sample code available? Uh, yeah, there's some sample code available. Um, there's a couple ways to get it. A, a simple way to get it is to go to the FileMaker website and look under FileMaker Go under the products area, and then there's a resources page. And we list a whole bunch of resources there. There are some kits you can download. There's also a webinar, a different webinar we did that had more specific details on how to actually lay things out for iOS devices, you know, screen sizes and things like that. There's actually a whole resources page. There's a ton of information there. Um, we have, a, um, we have a, also a developer's program that's uh, the enormous price of $99 a year. It's actually a pretty good deal called our technical network. And you can join in there. Now, there's a lot of uh, uh, options, you know, a lot of sample code and things like that available in the technical network, white papers and things. Plus, you have access to a forum with a lot of other developers who you can post questions to. And so that's another good resource for people who, uh, who want to uh, do some development. Uh, here's a question I'll pass on to Bill, which is, how many iOS clients can connect to a FileMaker server? Now, that will depend on which server you choose. Isn't that right, Bill? Yeah, it will depend on that. Uh, uh, Assuming that you purchase the server that has the um, uh, no restrictions on the number of users, it's really going to come down to you know how how well do things perform you know, at some level, depending on the architecture of your solution and what it's being asked to do. There, there's going to be a degradation in the, the 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 performance of the solution, but there's no hard limit to the number of clients. Remember though. A FileMaker Go client is the same as a FileMaker Pro client. So I may have 15, 20 desktops, and I may have you know 30 or so Go clients that are connecting to it, regardless if they're on iPad or iPhone. They all count against the numbers. Uh, so there's no limit. It's just a matter of how well your solution performs. Right. Um, <clears throat> I think maybe I'll just uh, uh, expand on that a little. There's two servers that we offer. There's FileMaker Server, and then there's something called what we call FileMaker Server Advanced. And FileMaker Server has a connection limit of, I think it's 250, which means you can have a mix of up to 250 clients, whether there's their iPhones or iPads or uh, whether their um, desktops connected to that server. Then our server advance has no connection limit. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're normally expecting thousands and thousands of people on a server. We're, we're really not architected for that type of environment. I mean, it could happen, uh, but it's not really the, the thrust of FileMaker. Uh, it, it's more, like Bill said, it will depend on the type of solution that you're building. If you have a solution that people are, are accessing infrequently and they're not doing a lot, a lot of uh, transactions, you could have a very, very large number of people connected to a server. If you have people that are doing an immense amount of, of, of moving around of data and doing very complex calculations and, and queries and such, well, you're going to have less. So it, it really comes down to, to some questions along those lines. Um, <clears throat> Can you make a SQL connection via the iOS device? You know, you, you, you actually uh, can't do that directly from the iOS device. Is that correctly, Bill? What you, you'll use as server as your, as your sort of intermediary? Yeah, that's the point. There, there really is no support for uh, ODBC via the iOS device. Now, there's other mechanisms that you can go through, but uh, the, the net of it is, is in the demonstration I showed you was that I will use the server where I'm hosting my file from to be the aggregate and to pro provide the ODBC connectivity. That allows me to not have to worry about deploying drivers and setting up DSNs, which on the Pro and uh, Windows and Macintosh desktop, there are equivalents to that. However, on the iOS device, there is nothing like that, and that's where server comes into play to give you that kind of connectivity without having to install those or manage them on there, and they're just not available right now. Right. I mean, I really, I think, uh, you know, Bill makes an excellent point. You, you, you probably don't want to manage ODBC connections directly from those devices. It's just so much easier to set one server up somewhere, have it manage your connections for you, 
manage the drivers from there and you know enable the access from your um, from your mobile uh, your mobile devices. I mean, the 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 same thing's true whether or not you're also doing uh, you know even just imports from a data source. Let's say something as simple as getting a data extract from a large data source. Uh, you know, and you want a, a DB2 database, and you get this nightly data dump, and you want to import it in and distribute it out to your mobile workers. Why, why do that out to every single person? You know, pull it into FileMaker Pro. Let FileMaker Pro be your data mart, if you will, and distribute it out through there. It's just an easier architecture to, to work with. Uh, here's another question, which is the uh, $20 iPhone cost, the $40 iPad cost. Is that a, a monthly cost or an annual cost? Or no, it's a, it's actually a one-time cost. You just simply uh, purchase. You know, however many of those you need, deploy them, and and you're done. And you can uh, open up any database. FileMaker Go currently supports uh, any FileMaker Pro database uh, in the FileMaker Pro 7 FP7 file format, which actually works. Uh, it's from FileMaker 7 on up to today. So that's all all pretty, all FileMaker databases cre uh, created in about the last uh, like seven years will work uh, in FileMaker Go. So one purchase, and you can do all that. Let's see. Here's another question. Um, oh, how, how, how does syncing happen? So there's no native sync built into FileMaker Go and FileMaker Pro. However, we have many developers and many organizations that have created their own sync models. Uh, I mentioned earlier PMD Promotions. Uh, you may remember that. Those are the guys that, that put up posters in uh, cafes and coffee shops. They have a situation where every morning the, uh, the, 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 the uh, reps, as they call them, they get onto a wireless network and they download a bunch of records to their iPod touches from a central FileMaker database. Then they're disconnected all day. They're running around. They're they're um, doing their jobs, putting up posters, taking pictures. And then at the end of the day, they make a wireless connection and upload it. The way that was all set up was with scripts. So they wrote uh, um, they wrote scripts to be able to pull the appropriate records down and post the appropriate records up there. So that can all be set up. It's it's something that. Uh, you can create yourself, or you can get a developer to create for you. Do you have anything you want to add to that, uh, Bill? No, and there's a variety of models there. Uh, we're starting to see uh, people building very specific frameworks, if you will, to support that model. Um, there are a variety of ways you can do it. FileMaker from the iOS device can import uh, data from server, and you, thus you can pull the new records down and push them back up. There's probably um, as many different ways to support a sync model as there are different ways that you might use it. So. Um, there's, there's frameworks starting to appear, and there's lots of ways that you can build them customized to your specific business needs. Um, the question here, are, are there limitations on the scripts that I think you use for FileMaker Go for the iPad? So for example, if FileMaker Pro has a, a extensive scripting language, you can uh, uh, create quite complex solutions with it. And the question is, well, how much of those scripts will really run on the iPad? Um, most of them will, not all. I'll let Bill give a slightly more nuanced answer than that. You know, really, it's, uh, at this point, the product line is so, is so mature, it's almost uh, equal fidelity. I mean, there are things that aren't supported on the iOS device uh, that we can support on the desktop. They're just not capable. But in terms of business flow, logic, and how you, the mechanics behind the way you'd architect a script, they're almost equal in, in most cases. So without getting into very, very specifics of um, you know, this works and that doesn't work, there are also things that work on the iOS device that don't necessarily work on the desktop. So it's a little bit of a trade-off between the two. But in general, almost everything works exactly the same. Uh, on both platforms. Well, these are great questions, but guys, we're we're really just about out of time here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and and wrap this up. I want to make a couple of comments. First of all, thank you all for attending. We had a, a fantastic turnout today. Huge numbers of attendees. I know when you're on a webinar, sometimes you don't realize, but there were a whole bunch of people on this on this webinar. Also, we'll be recording uh, this webinar, and uh, you'll be able to view it again later if you want to up on our website. Um, you can see there on your screen a link where you can go to FileMaker.com and uh, downloading the free trial of FileMaker Pro. You can get an iOS deployment kit. You can find other resources there as well. So I strongly recommend if you have any interest whatsoever, it doesn't cost anything, go ahead and, uh, and, and go to that link and check it out and see, and see you know, explore this further. We're, we're again going to be wrapping up now, but I, I want to you know, again tell you how excited I am that you came, and I want you to keep that vision in mind. You really can do it. You can create a custom iOS solution that looks great, that runs great, that will make you and your users and your management 
quite happy, and you can do it in a matter of hours, maybe days. That's it, all using FileMaker Pro. I recommend you give it a try. You'll, you'll like the results. Thank you, and until we meet again, so long.